Hey guys, today we are checking out a totally wireless security camera from RioLink. It's the Argus 2 and it has the optional solar panel. I'm super excited about this setup because it allows me to install my security camera pretty much anywhere as long as I'm within Wi-Fi range. We'll look at what's included in the box, I'll add it to the RioLink app and I'll install the camera in a bunch of locations outside and in so you can get a good idea of how it works and how it could work for you. I'll show tons of daytime and nighttime footage, I'll do a water test, Test, a Wi-Fi range test and whatever else I can think of. Basically everything you need to know about this camera before purchasing one. So be prepared for a lot of information. This camera can be purchased individually or together as a package. The camera is about $100 US and the combo is about $120. They go on sale every now and then so keep an eye out for that. I have a link for coupon codes in the description below that can be used on top of any sales that RioLink is currently offering. So do check that out. Let's see what's in the box. Starting off we have the quick install guide. Give it a read or keep watching this video. A couple of mounting templates so you know where to drill your holes when installing the mounts. A surveillance sticker to let others know of the presence of your camera. This right here is a strap in case you cannot make screw holes in your installation surface. Let's cut away here and look at a few examples. Here's the strap when it's used to attach the camera to a downspout. Now here it is attached to the railing on my deck. Let's jump into the camera for a quick shot of what it sees from this rail. You could even attach it to a fence like this vinyl one if you don't want to damage it with screws. Here's another quick view of what the camera sees. And lastly I strapped the camera to this tree. Ideally you would install it on a bigger tree and away from the branches but you get the picture of how it works. Next we have a small lanyard, a micro USB cable to charge the battery, some screws for attaching the wall mount to your install surface, a reset pin to reset the camera back to factory defaults, an outdoor wall or ceiling mount. This plate can be removed from the bottom and attached to the mounting surface by screws or the strap. What I like about this is there's only one tightening point to control your camera's direction. And this right here is a skin to protect your camera from the elements, especially around the seam where the battery fits into the camera. It also has a little sunshade to protect the camera's lens from the overhead sun or rain. This is the rechargeable battery. It has a micro USB charging port on the back for wall charging or solar power charging the battery. The contacts are at the bottom to power the camera and on the back here we have some more battery specs. And here it is the camera with the magnetic wall mount attached. The battery contacts are spring loaded and there's more specs written on the back. Oh next I'm going to peel away the film nice and clean. The camera is surprisingly heavy and has a nice quality build. It's plastic and is actually pretty slick looking. The indoor wall mount is simply a ball of metal and the magnet is located in the camera body. It's very powerful and no need to worry about it shifting. I like this because it allows you to change the camera's point of view without loosening any screws. The battery drops right into the back of the camera. Between charges the battery will last about six months but of course that will decrease. The more motion that triggers the camera to record and the more you access it from the app. When the camera is not active the 120 degree PIR sensor here on the front is responsible for picking up motion. That's because PIR sensors require very little electricity. We'll test this wake up and record time to see if we lose any footage when motion is detected. Below the charging port is an LED indicator. This flashes orange and green if there is an issue with your charger, most likely because there's not enough power. When it's orange it's charging and when it's green it's done charging. Like I mentioned already this camera is wireless and it needs to be connected to a 2.4 gigahertz network. Most routers are 5.0 gigahertz and 2.4 but double check to make sure your router or access points broadcast at 2.4 gigahertz. There's a card slot on the side for a micro SD card up to 64 gigs. Plenty of space for months of motion clips. So yeah you can record motion but not continuously record. You can also record to your phone using the movie icon. Normally in my videos I would connect the camera to my PC and record the footage using Blue Iris. It's technically possible 
but unfortunately we're not going to touch that today because Rio Link doesn't recommend it because it puts a lot of strain on the battery. We'll skip that for now and maybe tackle that in a future video. Next to the card slot, we have a reset button. Insert the pin until you hear, factory reset succeeded. Please release the re- And now it's factory reset. On the bottom, there is a hole for mounting the camera with the security mount. Here is a quick time lapse of how this is set up. The camera does have night vision up to 33 feet. We'll test that out shortly. There's a low spot above the lens that detects environmental lighting and tells the camera to switch between daytime and nighttime modes. The little hole below is a mic and allows surrounding sounds to be recorded and for two-way audio. There is also a speaker near the base for the two-way audio and for the alarm. The lens has a very wide field of view, meaning it would be great for an enclosed area like a greenhouse, porch, small garage, or a two-car driveway. We'll check out a bunch of locations here shortly. And lastly, we have the sensor. The 2 megapixel 1080p Starlight CMOS sensor records at 15 frames per second, which is common for Wi-Fi cameras to save on disk space and decrease Wi-Fi lag. Now let's have a quick look at the solar panel. It's pretty straightforward. It comes with another window sticker, mounting template, setup guide, metal mount, screws, and, and 4.5 meters, almost 15 feet of cable. And even the connector has a watertight seal. As you may know, the panel doesn't power the camera, but rather keeps the battery topped up and the camera uses this power bank. Please run Reolink app, add the camera and set it up. I've already downloaded and installed the Reolink app. Since I already have an account, let's add the camera. Click on the plus in the upper right hand corner and scan the QR code on the back of the camera. You need to connect to your Wi-Fi by selecting your network and adding the password. The app will present you with a QR code that will pass the Wi-Fi information back to the camera to finalize the connection between the two. Scan succeeded. Camera is connecting to your router. Please wait. Connection to the router succeeded. Welcome to Reolink. You'll be asked to give the camera a password. Now this isn't your Reolink password, but it's the password to access your camera directly. Then give your camera a name, and then you're done. Reolink has perfected this linking process. I love how it walks me through every step of the way. For me, this is an easy setup and a huge selling point. Let's bring up the feed and do a quick lag test. So, Not bad, about a second or so delay. That's, that's not too bad at all, pretty impressive. Next, I'm gonna update the quality to 1080p so I see the best quality image and I know I have a strong Wi-Fi connection. And next, we have the movie camera icon I was referring to earlier, allowing you to record footage directly from the camera onto your phone. You're limited to the space on your phone as the footage goes directly to your camera's video storage. As an FYI, I've noticed on a couple of occasions that the video and audio aren't quite in sync with each other all the time when recording footage this way. So where would you install a camera like this? Well, how about on a shelf when you're going on vacation to keep an eye on the front door? Here's a quick view of what that footage could look like during the day and here at night. Maybe you could place it next to your pet's food bowl to keep track of their eating habits. Or even outside, over a door, to keep an eye on who is approaching. How about in your vegetable garden to see who is hanging out there? So many options and no wired restrictions. I'm very happy so far with this camera. Let's go through the installation process here inside my garage. The solar obviously won't work here unless I run a wire and put the panel outside. I'll install the ball mount here and the camera just sticks to it using its magnet, which is super convenient. Let me rotate the image here so everything isn't upside down. And here is a look at some footage. Okay, so now we're gonna open the garage door and see how the lighting changes with bright outside and dark inside. Actually, it's pretty good. And here we are in complete darkness with just the IR lights from the camera illuminating the garage. 
Very impressive, no ghosting, no trailers. The next location we're gonna try is right here over my front door. I'm going to fast forward through this install so it's much quicker. And now let's point the camera towards the driveway. Let's also take the time and install the solar panel here and plug it into the camera. I love how it creates that seal around the solar plug. All right, so check out this image. It is awesome. Wide enough so I can see the whole driveway. And I can even see the garage doors if they're open or closed. Nice colors, good image, very happy. Let's do the license plate test where I start at 75 feet away. It isn't until I'm 25 feet away that you can easily read the plate. That's fantastic. At night here, it's pitch black and in this wide open space, it isn't until I'm 20 feet away before you can easily see features. This is again, impressive. Other cameras often have blinding IR lights that wash out the scene, but this one here looks great. So let's take a second and format that SD card so we can set up motion recording. Go to more settings. Select storage, format the card. Now back on the camera recording, we'll select 15 seconds of footage once motion is detected. We need to turn on the PIR sensor here. You can change the sensitivity from high, medium, and low. Let's turn on that optional alarm. It's not too loud, but it will attract someone's attention, letting them know that the camera is there and they're getting recorded. Let's make sure that push notifications are turned on so I get notified when the PIR sensor is triggered. And this is what it looks like and sounds like. When I was testing the PIR sensor, I received a notification when I was about three meters or 10 feet away. I like that I can jump right into the app's events and play back the footage that triggered the alert. The trigger area seems to be a straight line perpendicular to the camera. I like the quick wake up time. As soon as the PIR sensor senses the motion, the camera wakes up, starts recording, and then turns on the alarm. Pretty cool. And by the way, I did a PIR sensor test at night, and the sensor seems a little bit more sensitive during that time. I'm not sure why, but good to know. A quick note on the solar panel. After doing a lot of testing, the panel doesn't seem to require direct sunlight. It kept the camera charged at 100%, even around the freezing point. The camera seems to be getting the juice it needs to stay topped up. On the other hand, once we hit minus 5 Celsius or 23 Fahrenheit, the camera worked fine, but the battery stayed at about 91% for most of the day, even in direct sunlight. The solar panel didn't seem to work at keeping the battery topped up during those extra cold days. Let's quickly turn the camera around and face the door. Hey guys, I'm 8 feet away from the camera. The image quality is perfect and the coverage is awesome. All right guys, this is the nighttime view with the light on. It's very cold out here. It's about minus 10 degrees Celsius. This is how it looks when it's totally black. Only the infrared lights from the camera are lighting me up. At night here, looking through the window, you can see that the IR lights are turned off. When I open up the door, the camera wakes up. I see my alert and I can go back and play it right away. Since you don't see me opening the door in the playback, it proves that the wake up time takes about a second. Not too bad though, considering that this is an awesome energy saver for the battery. Let's quickly install the camera here over the back door. If I had no access to power or network cables out here, this camera would solve my problem. And if I were to install the solar panel here, I could tuck the wire into the corner edge and attach the panel onto my Eve. All right guys, here is some sample daytime footage. This is what the outdoor footage looks like with a couple of overhead lights. And this is what the picture looks like when there's no infrared lights, just complete darkness. This is some nighttime footage with no lights, just the IR lights from the camera. Next, we're going to run out to the backyard and do a range check. Let's see how far I can walk with the camera in hand and continue to keep Wi-Fi contact. Inside here, I have a Ubiquiti access point on my main floor. I did a video on these a while back and they're still going strong. All right, guys, this is our first range test. We are 50 feet away from the access point. 
All right, second range test. We are 100 feet away from the access point. All right, guys, this is 200 feet away from the access point. There is a little bit of lag introduced here, as you can see, but not too bad. All right, guys, so we're 225 feet away. I couldn't get any farther in this than the range. As you can see, even 225 feet was pushing my limits. All right, for our next test, we're going to run outside with the garden hose and spray down the camera. I slid the camera silicone off to ensure that no water made its way into the battery area. So what didn't I like about this camera? Well, not too much. The PIR sensor zone is a little short. I'd like to see that I extend it to about 20 feet or 6 meters. I also found that the mic picked up the slightest breeze and ruined my audio. Maybe some internal foam or material for a windscreen could help out there. So what did I like about the camera? Well, I like that it's a standalone device and all you need is just the camera, solar panel, and memory card. You don't need a PC or a network video recorder. I love the image quality during the daytime and at night. The wide viewpoint was fantastic. The fact that I had next to no false alarms with the PIR sensor, including when lighting conditions changed or it started snowing in front of the camera, no false alarms. The onboard storage is perfect and the connectivity was flawless. The solar panel and long battery life really make this a game changer to security cameras, especially because it works during a power outage. It's a perfect DIY solution and it removes the frustrations of running network cables up and down walls, through ceilings, in attics, across floors, and out your yard. Again, do check out the links below for more information and check out the coupon codes that can be used on reolink.com. As always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more home tech DIY projects. Thanks for watching.